So I built this tiny house uh, myself and designed it um, from scratch and, and built it on a flatbed trailer. Um, that's not to say I didn't have a lot of help along the way. Uh, my family was very supportive, my parents and my brother and my girlfriend Catherine. So I owe it to them and a lot of other friends that, that came up and, and got involved um, to say thank you and, and I couldn't have gotten this far without them. It's on a 20 foot trailer and it sits eight and a half feet wide on the outside, seven feet on the inside, and I'm 140 square feet. My roof is a steel corrugated metal and the same with my siding. That decision was made for mostly durability as well as cost and weight. For me, it was important to keep the budget pretty lean on this on this project. So I, wherever, wherever I could, I bought reclaimed materials or used materials. And so in total, I came in under 20,000 Canadian dollars to get this far. A big part of that was uh, the trailer for the, the house itself was bought used, uh, still in good condition, but I did have to, to finish it up a little bit. The insulation in the house, all the rigid foam was bought used the kitchen cabinets were also uh, bought used very inexpensively and then refurbished in the windows and many other building supplies for the project. Helped me keep the budget really lean and worked out quite well. This is my kitchen. I'm not a huge cook, but I do like to have some facilities. So um, I have my double induction cooktop here and just a mini bar fridge. Pretty much what you expect, just a small freezer space. The sink I bought at a thrift store for $7. And the backsplash, even though it looks really fancy, again was reclaimed and was only $50 or so. This was uh, used from a Habitat for Humanity restore and it was only $25. So I got a good deal on that. Eventually I'll put in a, like a full height pantry, just open style in here. Um, spaces to store sort of more dry goods and whatnot. So this is my bed, like a lot of traditional tiny houses. Uh, I, you're pressed for space in terms of sleeping and, and living space. So I wanted to find a solution where I had enough sort of space to walk around and enjoy myself when I was awake, but when I was going to bed, I didn't want to have to climb into a, to a small space and, and be cramped in there. So this is what I call sort of the elevator bed and the way it works is at night time, which is what it's set up for right now, it's at a level about four and a half feet off the ground and so there's still lots of space above that I'm not banging my head and I can still have, you know, I can sit up and read or watch TV and I can just pull one of these chairs and, and step up and climb into it and it's easy to get into. But when I come home at night from work and I want to sit on the couch and relax, I, I developed a system to allow the bed to raise most of the way up to the ceiling. So this is iteration number four of this bed. Uh, there is several others that involved electric winches and, and different pulley systems. Uh, each one of them didn't work in its own unique way. So this is number four and, and I, I like the way it works right now. Hopefully I still like it in a few weeks. but. Um, but right now I have a manual winch that's on the wall and the cables go up to, to a block and tackle system on each corner of the bed. So it reduces the amount of force in each individual line and spreads it out over actually 28 cables that come down over the course of the whole bed. And it comes into a manual winch that I can hand crank and then just it locks itself when it's up fully. This is the bathroom. It's it's on a raised floor and there's water tanks underneath that store 88 gallons of water. So I just pull this aside right now. The tanks are back in there along with uh, my pipes and my and my booster pump to give me water pressure inside the space. I moved in about three weeks ago now and and last week the water of the park was turned off for the winter time so the pipes don't freeze and so I filled up my tanks at that stage and I've gone about four days and I still have more than half left. All the drainage from the shower and the sinks go, they're all piped down uh, to a gray water tank that sits underneath the trailer that's uh, strapped to the underbelly and there's a valve so I can open that valve and drain the line 
uh, down to the septic system in the winter time. In the summertime, I just keep it open and it just drains fully all the way through. We've got a nature's head unit here, which is a composting toilet. And I've been using it for three weeks now and it's been working really well. If, if you maintain it, there's no smell. And I think it's really good for the environment in terms of water usage. And if something were to happen where I temporarily didn't have water or didn't have power, I can still use it regularly and, and not be worried about that. The sink here is, is really sort of thin and, and close up to the wall. It's only 10 inches wide, um, which was good leaves more space in the rest of the room. This is my single piece fiberglass shower and uh, it was really important to me to have something that's easy to clean and that I could stand and have a full space uh, and I wasn't feeling cramped in. Next to the bathroom, just off the entranceway, I have my mechanical room. Uh, this is where I have my electrical panel, my hot water heater. I have my heat recovery ventilator and that draws exhaust air from when I am either in the shower or I'm cooking a meal and it ejects all the moist air to the outside and it brings in fresh air. This will help prevent any mold issues throughout the winter and it keeps the air inside that I'm breathing fresh and, and clean. These white pipes here are piped up to my ceiling and it's not fully installed yet but in the next couple weeks I'm going to have a circulator pump that will circulate my hot water and it will heat my ce ceiling to a high temperature and that's how I plan on primarily heating the space inside here. It'll feel like a, like a cool fall day with a warm sun. That's kind of the idea that I'm going for. The idea behind a heated ceiling versus a heated floor was the decision that came about because of a few different factors in the space. Uh, with the floor space I have in the tiny house, it's taken up by kitchen counters and, and a couch, so I don't have a lot of space to actually keep heated. The ceiling is fully open, so I can, I can heat that um, entirely. The other factor is with the heated floor, I can only make it so hot before my feet start to sweat and it becomes uncomfortable. But the heated ceiling, I can heat to, to much hotter than that, like 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and it'll radiate the heat down much better. So to prevent the heat that's in the ceiling from escaping upwards, I have put two things in place. I've put aluminum plates that the pipes sit in and that radiate the heat downwards. On top of those plates, I have about 10 inches of insulation that keeps all the heat inside the space and minimizes how much escapes to the roof. So a heated floor, the primary method of of heating through that is radiation. There is some convection that occurs, which is the process of hot air rising, and that's only about three to five percent of how the space is heated with a heated floor. So when you heat your ceiling, you do lose that convective property, but because it's a lot hotter of a surface, you get a better heat transfer from your ceiling down to your space that way. So this is sort of, it functions as a bit of a workspace with my laptop and um, a space to put papers or whatnot down whatever I'm working on. It's also nice because it's a place to sit and eat dinner um, at a table and it doesn't take up too much space. It's close into the wall. Above that I've got just sort of a, a small TV that I put on a mount. I can fold out and, and sort of face wherever I happen to be in the tiny house, whether it's making dinner or sitting on the couch or lying in bed. And that's also just hooked up to my computer. There were a few reasons why I decided to do this. Uh, financially, I think it makes sense for me. I was paying a thousand dollars a month in rent for a basement apartment with not much natural light. So I wanted to be in a space that was more financially accessible, but also, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shrouded in darkness all the time. I found an RV park um, that's close to where I work, that's open year round and allows me to have a short commute. My monthly costs are lower and so I get to save more money and I get to um, put more of that towards my social experiences. And environmentally, it, it forces me to be really conscious about how much water I'm using and how much electricity I'm using and, and my impact on the space around me. But mainly the reason I did it was because I wanted to go through the learning experience and, and challenge myself in putting something like this together. It's, it's a bit of a puzzle about how all its systems and, and pieces connect and, and it, there are many challenging moments. But for me, I learned a lot along the way and, and 
I by no means consider myself an expert in any category, but I've, I've plumbed a water system that, that works at this stage and, and I've wired an electrical panel that works. So those experiences for me were really rewarding.